I'm not gonna bite it, I'm just gonna pop the whole thing in my mouth. Mm. Mm. It just mashes right up in your mouth. It's crazy. Tastes as tasty as it looks. Got tables situated outside, mimicking a feel of Bangkok, Thailand. During my recent cruise through the beautiful and majestic islands of New Zealand, I was able to spend a little bit of time exploring the world-renowned city of Sydney, Australia. Come along with me in this video as I explore the popular food scene and share with you some of the top places I visited to curb my hunger and cravings during the time I spent in this beautiful and iconic city. Let's get started. All right, good afternoon everybody. So today in Sydney, Australia, I'm actually craving some good sashimi and fresh fish. So no better place to get it than at the Sydney fish market from what I've been told. Anywhere in the world that has a fish market that's open to the public generally offers some of the highest quality sashimis and other types of seafood delicacies. So today I'm actually on my way to Sydney fish market. I've never been here before, but one of the first things I've noticed as I make my way into the actual core part of the fish market is there's neighboring seafood restaurants right outside so if you don't want to go into the heart of the fish market itself it appears you can actually dine at some local restaurants nearby that are probably serving the same quality stuff but i'm in here for the fish market itself the whole experience so we're actually on our way in there now so there's a fresh raw seafood section for you to pick out by the kilogram but in this particular food stall, if you will, or market part of the broader market, it's called Peter's Sydney Fish Market, but they actually have a standing sushi bar. There's a takoyaki station here for you to order, get a little bit of taste of Japan. And there's a gentleman here who's shucking live oysters as well. So if you're here for oysters, there's a huge selection. One over here called Nicholas Seafood Traders. And so if you're not a fan of raw, they obviously have different food vendors here that serve seafood that's already cooked up for you. Can I do the sashimi lover platter? The sashimi lover? Can I order one? I found what's interesting though is, I believe this is just a culture in Australia, is any condiments that you want, including soy sauce and wasabi, they charge extra for it. They actually charge me $1.50 Australian dollars for a pre-mixture of soy sauce and wasabi, which is nice, and I'm doing it myself. So right now I'm on the hunt for some good oysters, and I actually want a little bit thicker pieces of scallops, because the scallops that came on that seafood lover platter were very, very thin, so I want something a little bit more meaty and hearty. And so this time I'm standing in front of the Peter's Fish Market at the Oyster Bar stall right outside, and they sell plenty of fresh oysters here. Most of them are set up in a dozen that costs about 30 Aussie dollars for the dozen, but you can actually buy a half dozen as well. We're not craving that many oysters, I'm just gonna go with six. I'm gonna go with these oyster urchins, which are a combination of raw oyster with uni. And they top a bunch of other stuff like caviar and salmon roll on top of it. Interesting. Thank you so much, all right. The ease of paying with your phone, Apple Pay, credit cards, man, you don't gotta carry cash around. If you are a seafood lover, man, you will be like a kid at a candy shop over here. This is, the, this is your candy shop. They have the scallop sashimis here that go for about $3.50 Aussie dollars per piece. So we're gonna order a few of these here. I'm just trying to find a place to sit down now. It's quite busy here. All right, so I just found a seat right outside of Nicholas's Seafood Traders and more of a quiet area, which is nice because down right by the pier, some birds kind of roaming around that are threatening to steal your seafood. So this seems like it'd be a good spot to enjoy the seafood lover platter that I ordered. Here we go, I think I'm gonna try into some of that maguro. And so there is a lot of cuts, but they're very thin. So unlike some other uh, fish markets I've been to, they give much more thicker cuts, but this is actually gonna be nice. It's gonna be easy to chew, easy to swallow. Here we go, dip in some of that soy sauce and wasabi mix. Mm. Wow, wow, that maguro. I don't know if you ever had maguro from another restaurant before and sometimes it comes out a little bit fibrous. 
That is like silk. It's like gelatin in your mouth when you actually put it in. So that's really, really good. Wow. This one I'm actually just try without some of that soy sauce. Just plain by itself. Mm. It's freshly cut today. Felt like it came straight out of the ocean or something. Really, really good. Mm. All right, next piece I'm gonna try is some of the salmon here. The two most common types of sashimi people like are the maguro tuna and the salmon cuts, right? Mmm. Wow. Everything's so silky. So silky smooth like jello. Wow. Like seafood jello in a way. <laughs> Try some of this yellow fin here. Oh, that's really thin. He's just kind of broke apart on me. Oh, okay. There we go. Get a bigger bite. Two pieces in one. Okay. Well, the two bites I've had is the maguro is still the best. The salmon's really good, but the taste of that Tuna, the texture is like jello pretty much, seafood jello. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. That yellow fin and the, the tuna are probably my two most favorite cuts so far. Now, if you've been following me on my YouTube channel, I recently did a video about the addiction aquatic development fish market in Taipei, Taiwan. And in my opinion, that's still one of the best fish markets on the planet that you can visit. But wow, this is really good. All right, man, those scallops look very, very fresh. A lot more meat on them. And those oysters, they're not very big. The size of my thumb, perhaps, but those should be very, very fresh as well. Make for easy eating. And so this tiny little Tabasco bottle cost me two Aussie dollars. <laughs> the lemon with the oysters is free, but they only give you one, so I gotta use that juice sparingly. <laughs> wow, they look good. All right. All right, get a good amount of soy sauce on that. I'm not gonna bite it, I'm just gonna pop the whole thing in my mouth. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I don't even need teeth to chew that. Like, it just mashes right up in your mouth. It's crazy. It's like, it's like a, a, a batter, like a scallop batter almost. Really, really good. Wow, so fresh too. Wow. You want to get a good amount of soy sauce on that too, because the soy sauce and just the natural flavor of the scallop and any type of sashimi is just like, wow. But something about the combination it's just meant to be together, like sashimi and soy sauce like are a married couple, you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. I'm deliberately not using my teeth to chew it, and actually my tongue is able to mash through that. But it's not like, it's not like putting batter in your mouth though, like it's, there's texture to it still. But it's very, very silky and like jello pretty much. You can eat jello without teeth, right? So we're gonna try some of these fresh oysters. <laughs> That's almost half the bottle there. All right, I'm gonna do the honors with that one that I just loaded half the bottle of that tiny Tabasco sauce on. Ah. Mm. Mm. Wow, just like the scallop. Dissolves in your mouth, wow. Mm. And creamy. Yeah, see, it's like perfectly shucked, just kind of sliding in and out. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow, so fresh. Oh yeah, there goes Chiki. Yep. Mm. So when you get to the level of eating seafood like us, or you appreciate seafood like us, you don't say so good, right? You say so sweet. <laughs> and that's like, when you get to that level, if you're making comments about seafood, raw seafood being sweet, that proves that you are a raw seafood lover. So like I said, that's a combo of like a raw oyster, some raw sea urchin, and then they pair it with a whole bunch of different fish eggs. So there's obviously, I think that's caviar and some salmon eggs of different sizes. Drizzle some of that sauce. Yeah, it's just like a teriyaki soy sauce, like a sweet sauce, right? Mm. You definitely have to have that sweet sauce because otherwise it would just be a mouthful of salt water in your mouth because everything is like salty. Wow. But adding that teriyaki based soy sauce balances it all out, makes it really, really good. So we are now leaving the Sydney fish market. I would say if you're in Sydney and you're looking for some really good sashimi, raw seafood, don't go to a restaurant, come here. You know, the, the whole experience is just amazing. That is some of the cleanest seafood I've had in my life. Probably some of the cleanest food you'll find in all of Australia. If you're in Sydney, this is like the place to go. So definitely come check it out. If you live here, if you've never been here before, come check it out. If you're a tourist and you love seafood, come check it out.
So we're gonna actually go to a restaurant called Mr. Wong's, which is a very popular restaurant here in Sydney, Australia that serves Cantonese style cuisine in a French colonial setting. So we're gonna go check it out. Come along with us. And uh, right now we're actually walking through a pretty secluded back alley with some really old looking buildings. So I believe the restaurant is tucked in these, one of these buildings that we're walking through here. So right when you walk into the building, it's a very old French colonial building and it's very, very crowded on a Tuesday early evening. When you first sit down, the menu is obviously pretty complicated. You can order a la carte items or you can go with the banquet menu set. And there are various banquet menu sets depending on what item you want to try. We're going to keep it pretty simple, just one due to budget and simplicity. We're going to go with the king crab fried rice, some green beans with pork mints, uh, the sweet and sour pork hot, and the Peking duck pancakes, which sounds very, very good. All those are highly recommended, at least from previous reviewers that we did our research on before we came to this establishment. All right, so the first platter they brought to us was a half order of the Peking duck pancakes. You got your duck, the half duck here, and then the rice papers that they serve it in. So what we did is we just took a piece of flour paper. It's actually, I don't believe it's rice paper, I believe it's just flour. We took a big chunk of duck meat. And what I like about this particular way they prepare it at this restaurant is the duck meat, or the duck pieces, actually involves both skin and a heavy piece of duck meat. So it's a little bit different than what I'm used to. All right, I'm gonna dig into this. Oh man, see that, that duck meat is so big, my wrap can't even handle it. That's the biggest duck meat in that stack. Mm. Mm. If you've never had Peking duck before, in all honesty, I do think, obviously if they marinate the duck well, there's plenty of flavor in the meat and the skin, but for this particular dish, the hoisin sauce is actually what makes it taste really good. It just blends it all together very, very well. A nice big chunk. Mm. The skin actually has a, like, a light crispy texture too. They prepare it very, very well. Very tender and very juicy too. Mm. So they just bought us our next two items and the first of the two items was the king crab fried rice. And I was just expecting fried rice with minced crab, but they actually top it with a huge pile of like breadcrumbs. And what it is is actually just dehydrated crab and fish that they shred up or mince up and it gives it an overall very, very savory flavor. And the other item they brought to us is our twice cooked green beans with minced pork. And the reason why it's called twice cooked is they actually deep fry the green beans first to kind of give the outer layer a very crispy texture. And then they stir fry it in a wok with all the other ingredients like the minced pork and the flavorings and the XO sauce. So it looks very, very good. Now the king crab is minced up very well. I believe they put a lot in here. You can't really see it, but you see fine shreds of it. There we go. Take a big heaping scoopful. Mm. That crispy stuff is what makes it taste very well. It's a little bit peppery at the very end. Very, very good. Mm. Mm. Now the rice itself is prepared very, very simple. Just rice, minced up crab meat. And then in terms of vegetables, they just add a little bit of green onions and little pieces of corn. So it puts it all together, just a simple fried rice dish. And then what I like to do is actually take this twice cooked green beans with the minced pork and just pop that on top of my fried rice. Good. So this green bean dish does really go well with this fried rice. Um, eating it by itself is really overwhelming in terms of the flavor. There's a lot of flavor in this dish as you can see by the sauce. Even if we didn't order the fried rice, we definitely would have ordered a side of white rice. <laughs> Take a bite first. Mm, very crispy. Mm, let's go ahead. Very good. All right. All right, so we're going to dig into the sweet and sour pork hock. Actually, it's just a big, giant chunk of pork meat. Dig into it, cut into half of it first. Oh yeah. And there's actually a crispy skin on the outer layer that they leave behind as well. Yeah, so this is a big chunk of pork meat marinated in a heavy sweet and sour sauce. It doesn't look like it, but to me, it tastes just like sweet and sour pork. Minus the breading, but it feels like there's breading on there. So it's pretty interesting how they prepare it because it does really just taste like a sweet and sour pork, but it does not look like it. Obviously, there's a lot more meat substance. The meat is very finely shredded. Very, very good. Mm. 
Mm. Definitely a true biter. I don't think you've stuffed that whole thing in your mouth without like choking on it. So, with that being said, I'm actually gonna challenge myself and see if I can eat the whole thing in one bite. Man versus food challenge or something here. It's so tender. So if it's a tough piece of pork, it would be hard. But because it's so tender, you can actually do it. Okay guys, so we just finished up our meal at Mr. Wong. That was a lot of food. But the total cost for the four dishes was 226 Australian dollars. Food was very, very good. I would say that out of the four dishes that I enjoyed the most was the king crab fried rice paired with that twice cooked green beans with the minced pork. Those two dishes paired very, very well together. The Peking duck, I've had a lot of Peking duck in my life. What's different about that one is they give you big chunks of meat in the Peking duck. Unlike other places you have in the United States, it's just typically the skin. So this place is legendary from my understanding and there's obviously a lot of patrons, there's a lot of business folks that are eating here. A lot of folks here are probably on holiday that are looking to enjoy some fine dining. This is a place you definitely want to try out in Sydney, Australia. Again, it's not very cheap at all. So if you have the means and you're looking for that kind of fine dining experience, come check it out. So we are making our way to Harry's Cafe, The Wheels, and there's multiple locations scattered throughout the Sydney area. We are just going to the closest one near the Botanical Garden. So I heard the meat pies here are very legendary. I have had Australian meat pies before, but from local cafes, not this place. This place, again, is very, very popular. Thank you. Yeah, we actually ordered two separate items. Just to try it out, we're pretty hungry. Obviously walking through the botanical garden, you burn a lot of energy, right? So what we ordered was the beef meat pie. On top of it, they add a coating of mashed potatoes and some pea mix or pea mash that they drizzle with a whole bunch of a beef flavored gravy of some sort. So it's, it looks very, very heavy. It's a good thing we're gonna share. But then on top of that, we actually ordered the Cafe de Wheels hot dog. And so that one looks a little bit intense in terms of the size and portion. We're probably not going to be able to eat it all, but again, we're just going to hear the sample and share that experience with you guys. So, Cafe de Wheels. I'm going to just, I guess, maybe just eat some of this first. Yeah. Mm. Very, very good mashed potato. You can taste that pea mix or pea mash as well. It kind of gives a very nice blend. That gravy is very, very tasty. See all that meat smothered with all that sauce, not only on the outside, but also on the inside. Very, very savory. A lot of salty flavor inside. You can get some of the bread or the pie crust itself. I think you just gotta dig right into it. It's gonna get a little bit messy, but it's all good. Yep. Mmm. That crust is very, very fresh. Mm. Not chewy in any way. Very, very tender. Mm. The best way to eat this, I think, is try to get a little bit of everything in your bite. The crust just balances out all that flavor very well. So that pie, we're gonna take a little break from that and save some space in our stomach so we can drill into this thing. Jeez, I think, I, can, I would love to be able to just hold this like a traditional hot dog with my hands, but it's just too big. So let me go ahead and uh, dig into this here, get a little bit of that bread. There we go. A little bit spicy. That chili sauce, it's like a mixture of sriracha and Tabasco blended together but it's very, very good because there's a lot of bread to kind of like soak in all that flavor so you're not just putting all that sauce into your mouth. Oh yeah, and then they have some grilled onions. Mm. Personally, I like the meat pie better, but both are very, very good, very, very tasty. It tastes as tasty as it looks. It's like I'm having lunch with the KFC Colonel back in time. <laughs> Now I pulled up Google Maps and there's actually quite a few Harry's located all within the Sydney, the broader Sydney area. And this one is actually the original, I was just told, obviously based on the, the wall of fame that you see here. But um, they don't have any of these locations or this chain does not exist anywhere outside of Sydney. So in like cities like Melbourne or Brisbane, they do not have Harry's there. So if you're looking to dine and try this legendary meat pie experience out, then you gotta come to Sydney. <laughs> what my wife was saying as we're making our way away from Harry's is all the pigeons and the seagulls. They look very, very healthy. It's probably from all the good leftover scraps that they get from the customers, right? <laughs> I 
All right, so we are back in Sydney, Australia, and uh, we're craving Thai food, and there's a place in Thai town next to Chinatown called Prick Thai. It's got great reviews, so we're gonna try it out. All right, so the restaurant is located on the corner of Ken Street, and I'm not sure what the other street is, but right in the heart of Thai town. It's a small establishment. They got tables situated outside, kind of mimicking a feel of Bangkok, Thailand, which is a really, really cool experience. Weather's not quite as hot as it is in Bangkok. And so the first dish that actually came out is called the yen tofu. It's a pink broth. It's actually quite tart and tangy, but also savory. And you can actually order with different types of meat. Ours comes with plenty of shrimp, and then also some fish cake and tofu. And they also brought out the crispy pork here. This crispy pork belly, and it comes with different types of sauces. Here's a sweet and sour tamarind type sauce. And the other soy sauce here is just a dark soy sauce. Personally, I prefer the tart, spicy chili sauce but matter of preference, right? So it looks very, very fresh. Wow, okay. Big chunks of uh, pork belly as well. Dip a little bit of that sauce. Mmm, wow. Very, very tender. That sauce is very, very flavorful. You can't dip too much of it. Wow. Mmm, the outer layer, super crispy. But it's not, you can't bite through it. Perfect, like you bite into the outer layer, skin is like crunchy. And then when you get into the meat and the fat, it's like mushy. So it's kind of an interesting combination. Mm. Okay, and so I ordered the traditional boat noodle. It's a very big size, much bigger than what you typically get in Thailand. And you have a couple of options in terms of meat. So the first option is going to be beef or pork. We went with the pork just because that's my preference. And if what you didn't know is boat noodle actually dates back to ages in Thailand where this type of dish was only served from the boats of the river canals. So you have workers selling up to different food vendors and the food vendors would actually prepare small bowls of boat noodle for the customers. Then over time, the dish became so popular, it actually transitioned into restaurant establishments out in the streets of Bangkok and various parts of Thailand, scattered throughout Thailand cities. Let's dig right in. Oh yeah, here we go. Mm. Very good. Mm. What's unique about the broth is they actually cook it with pork blood. So that's what gives that broth that really rich thick and creamy texture and the look of it itself is really dark and heavy, right? It's not like a traditional soup broth. Ah, oh, that's good. Hot, savory, really, really good taste. All right, take a bite of this. Mmm, wow. That's braised for a long time because it's really, really tender. Hey, look at this giant chunk of pork, all the tendon, and they braised it for hours in order to get it this tender, unless they use some type of pressure cooker in the back, but wow. Mm. Wrong. We also ordered a plate of pad siu, which is just like a stir-fried rice noodle dish. So it's just flat rice noodles with some slices of chicken breast, and then they put some greens to kind of give it overall simplified flavor. Mm. Mm. Definitely a lot of soy sauce, but it's also sweet soy sauce as well. The dish overall is savory sweet. All right, I'm gonna actually try this yen tofu that my wife already made a good dent in. This is going to be more on the tart and tangy flavor side. It's salty in itself, but also sweet and sour. Mmm, very tart and tangy, salty as well. Wow, everything's really good here. Mmm, wow. That broth is what makes it really good. Mm. And so one of the nice things they gave to us as complimentary for coming here it's this coconut ice cream that's topped with a whole bunch of other toppings. I think that's freeze-dried mangoes and some peanuts and some coconut jelly. The toppings here is that's actual jackfruit. I thought that was freeze-dried mangoes at first, but they give you obviously the peanuts, some jackfruit, and some coconut jelly. So I'm gonna get a little bit of everything in one scoop here. Wow. That's cold. Mm. That's good. All the flavors coming together really, really well. Go for another bite here. Yeah, there we go. Mm, that's so good. So refreshing on a hot day out here in Sydney. Wow. Oh. Oh, it's drizzling. Mmm. Mm. Very good. And they were actually very nice and they brought us another dessert, which is a mango smoothie and mango sticky rice on top. So you kind of get the best of both, right? Like you get a mango smoothie and mango sticky rice, which is two of my most favorite Thai desserts. So. Yeah, see at the bottom of it is the smoothie part, and at the very top you can see the mango sticky right. Ah, it's like a mango slurpee. Wow, perfect. All right, that's a big scooper. Okay. Oh, it's falling, it's falling. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. 
so the mango is a little bit on the sour side, but because they put so much of that coconut milk and the sticky rice, the sweet in itself is a good combination. So upstairs is where they have the dessert bar and obviously the mango smoothie with the mango sticky rice and that amazing coconut ice cream with the sticky rice at the bottom is prepared up here but it's all one shop so if you guys are visiting Sydney, Australia and you want some really good Thai food, come to Prick Thai, alright? Thank you so much. Come to my cup. With the fish market that in my opinion can fight for the title as being the number one fish market in the world, to various food establishments offering Michelin star-like dining experience and mom and pop shops serving not only local but a taste of international flavors, the foodie scene here in Sydney is definitely one worth exploring whether you're a local or simply visiting this beautiful and iconic city. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel to continue following me on my food and travel adventures. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to sharing more of my Sydney food and travel adventures with you in my next video.